Hi, this is um, John Diel here again with the third blog for 2011. It's the eighth um, blogcast that I've done this year. Um, those of you who uh, follow the tweets, etc., that I do will be aware that this week is Go Green Week. Uh, you can find out far more by visiting uh, People and Planet website. The link, as usual, is at the top of the page. Uh, and there's a lot of information there about Go Green Week. So please feel free to go and visit that. Uh, I have some responsibility for uh, sustainability here at the Regional Support Centre North West. And I have already produced three e-magazine supplements to raise awareness of ways to be green. They're supplements 25, 26 and 27. The link for um, the publications that I've produced is at the top of the screen again. And if I just zoom in... He says, you'll see that those are the three um, e-magazine supplements that I have produced. I'm not going to go through them now. You can have a look, but it's got some fairly straightforward um, links that uh, anybody can do. It doesn't have to be the learning provider. It could be individuals. For example... If you set your default printing to be double-sided, it's been estimated that a third of the costs uh, that you have on paper at the moment um, will be saved. And that's quite some saving if you look at your paper bill. Uh, the second uh, link at the top of the screen now is uh, to take you to our Zipped XE library where those same three... Um, resources he says are there but when you click on those it will actually open uh, it will take you through to our download site where you can uh, download a, a zipped exe file and uh, when you've downloaded them you will need to um, Unzip the file and open up the index.html and you can then look at it offline. You can save it onto your uh, memory, onto uh, a CD player. You can actually put it in your VLE for staff development, whatever. Enough of that. Let's get on with the finds. Uh, you'll notice a deliberate mistake. Actually, it's not. It's just a mistake. Uh, the first find today is uh, URL void. And I suppose the question here is, how can learning providers teach their learners employing legitimate, useful websites and avoid those holding viruses and malware? Uh, well, one way is to encourage practitioners and their learners to scan through uh, website resources that they plan to use and or visit in a learning environment with URL Void. It's a free service that puts the URL address through its paces. Uh, it uses various search engines to scan the website and provides a report that can be used to evaluate the safety of a particular website. Let me just go back and copy my blog website and paste it in. Okay, I'll just show you what I've done. I've just pasted it in there to be checked. And then what I'm going to have to do is to click on Scan Now, which is what I'll do. And what will happen, he says, hopefully, while I'm talking to you, is that it will do a, a number of scans on that website and come up with a report. Uh, let me just scroll down a little bit and zoom in. You'll notice uh, the report date and time, my website. It's got a domain hash, an IP address. It's got a host name, which is posterous in... And my blog is obviously hosted in the United States. It's got the AS number. It's got the rack space uh, AS name. It's um, 
status, I'm pleased to say, is clean. And it goes through with all of the different um, reports. If it had found anything, it would have told us. Okay, so that's uh, the first find. I think it's useful. Uh, during my evaluation, I checked out the RSC Northwest website, my blog and my website, and they were all clean. As I say, the link was at the top of the page. Second find. Uh, if you want a, a stopwatch, uh, you can probably never find one. The link at the top of the page will take you here. Zoom in again for you. You've got a number of um, stopwatches that you can use. Egg timer, chest timer, cash clock. That's an interesting one. Put in the salary per hour of the people attending a meeting and turn that on and it'll tell you how much money is being spent by them being there in the meeting. Uh, custom count time, uh, I'm not going to read them all to you, there is a whole load of uh, timers that you can use. Uh, they're fairly straightforward. Uh, they either count down or it's a stopwatch. Uh, the plus, I suppose, is if you go to the address at the top of the page now, there is a free download of uh, a timer that will always stay on top regardless of what you're doing. You can resize the timer, but if you're working on a spreadsheet, you can put a timer in the top corner. A lot of learners may find that useful when they're doing a, an assessment to have the timer at the top so that they know how much time is left as they're going through it rather than keep having to look round at the clock or, or, or whatever. Uh, well worth a closer look. As I say, the links were at the top of the page. Um, you'll notice uh, that we're on the third find already and it is uh, post post. Um, many learners... I'll just go to the website. Many learners, employers, the e-learning providers use social media and each time they log into Facebook they see a clutter of links, videos, photographs uh, that their friends have either posted or liked. There are filters, as you will know, on Facebook, but for many that doesn't work. There is uh, a video clip, he says, quickly changing, that gives you an overview. I'll play the first part. Welcome to Post Post, your real-time Facebook newspaper. Access is simple, just connect with Facebook, and your personal real-time Facebook newspaper will arrive in seconds. Post Post delivers news from all of your friends and the pages you've liked, showing the most recent ones towards the top. Browse posts of articles, videos, and photos in an easy-to-navigate newspaper format. Okay, I'm going to stop there because there are filters built into this as well. At the top of the screen, and again I'll zoom in so that you can see, it's not clear on here, but um, there are facilities for you to actually just see the links that have come through Facebook, or the videos, or the pictures. Or if you click all there you will see it as a newspaper as already shown uh, on the screen. Okay, so that's post post. The, uh, a link to it is at the top of the page. I personally find it very useful. I'm not in Facebook or Twitter constantly. I tend to create a newspaper for both of them and go in perhaps once a day and, and add my comments and the like if as and when necessary. Okay, the next find, and this is where the deliberate mistake is. You'll notice, perhaps you won't, uh, you'll notice that post post was uh, the third find. And when I scroll down to the next one, which is Q Wiki, you'll notice as well that that's also the third find. <laughs> so you've actually ended up with a bonus today, uh, and that's eight uh, finds in all. Um, I did say Q Wiki because I think uh, going around talking about a quickie is perhaps not uh, politically correct or acceptable. But Quickie is a, a new search, well I say new, it's just opened its doors to the general public after uh, refining its system during a closed beta. 
It's a web application that will change the way most of us search and consume information. Its goal, uh, as it says, is to try forever to improve the way experience, uh, people experience information. Um, let's just do a, a quick search. We're based in Lancaster. If I search for Lancaster, there you go, Lancaster uh, Metropolitan Borough in the northwest of England. Oh, it disappeared. There we go, Lancashire. When we search, what you'll notice is a video will appear in a minute, and this is what you get. Lancaster is the county town of Lancashire, England. It is situated on the River Loon and has a population of 45,952. Lancaster is a constituent settlement of the wider city of Lancaster. Local. Okay, I'm, I'm going to stop it there. Um, you can turn the sound off if you don't like the electronic voice that comes in. Uh, and you can then read the script that appears down here at the bottom of the page. Some of the pronunciations are not that great, but if I just zoom in, okay, um, you have the opportunity to offer suggestions and improve the uh, Q wiki that you're actually washi watching. It's very much, I suppose, I don't know, it, it, it's almost a, a sort of uh, search engine and a curator for Wikipedia entries. Uh, I uh, have enjoyed using it. I know that a number of people that I've shown it to find it a very useful visual search engine and one perhaps that you ought to look at and evaluate to see whether it's appropriate for you. The next find is Live Station. Live Station, let's just go to it. Live Station it brings visitors international news channels to give them more choice and perspective wherever they are. Uh, it's all goes, also got some free software that you can download for a PC, Mac or Linux computer where you can then access a number of free channels to watch. If you do download it and it's not blocked by your learning provider, there is uh, the ability to chat with other users while you're watching the same channel. You can connect to a Twitter account and tweet while you watch and you can also grab uh, screen images of what you're watching and post them to Twitter along with comments. Uh, I can see the potential for a lot of uses. Uh, we're on the Al Jazeera web at the moment. If I click play... Them. And yet this is an army that has been put together by the existing, the existing structure. If, as uh, the Vice President Suleiman seems to be suggesting, the army is called upon in the final instance to act. OK, as you'll see over on the right-hand side, let me just scroll down a bit further. Let's just zoom in. OK, that's the uh, page on the right. There's the Al Jazeera English Channel, which we were just on, the BBC News, ITV, Channel 4, and so on. And down at the bottom here, there is the ability to go and look at other channels as well. By clicking on Next, more will come up. As I say, if it's not blocked, it may have many uses to actually get perspectives of how other country news channels actually view news that is current. Okay, the next find, which is actually our sixth, not our fifth, um, is free online children's books. I'll just go to the website. By making reading more interactive and animating the illustrations, the story time for me not only provides free books for young children, it puts reading up there with video games. Uh, it encourages young children to pay more attention to reading. The free books basically are available and played as slow animations within a web browser. Uh, and those animations of the books develops the young children's interest. It also provides young re readers with uh, an interactive experience. Uh, I need to go perhaps to one of the books and let's choose, uh, I don't know, that one and hopefully it will open relatively quickly. Okay, it tells you about it. It's for ages one to four. There are 21 episodes and so on. If I click play the story, you'll get a, a, an impression of what it's like. 
Story time for me. Come join the family. How happy we will be at Story. I'll get rid of the music while it's loading. Fern is visiting India, and she and her friend Sanjay are going into the jungle to meet some Indian animals. Can you notice how the uh, text? At they the top are not going to drive in a car. Highlighted. Instead, they are going to ride on an elephant. The elephant is called Hathi. Okay, I've turned the sound off purely and simply because some people may not like the the sort of electronic voice, but you can read it uh, as it's going along so that the youngsters can actually follow the talk. Down at the bottom of the screen, if I can just write on this as, as we're talking, are a number of toolbars that will allow you to turn certain things on and off and, and you can actually use the books manually as well as anything else. Uh, this particular book does, let me just es escape from here and let's pause it. Um, yeah, th this particular book does address some of the animals that are at risk uh, of becoming extinct and you will find that there are a number of socially relevant topics that are brought up in the books as well. Okay, I would have thought that family learning practitioners, parents, guardians and carers will appreciate story time for me and encourage their children to, to look at them or preferably look at them with them. Uh, speaking image next. Uh, speaking image basically is an application for creating interactive images and to share them with others. Along with textual annotation users can add different colored layers specifying certain parts of the image. I'll go into the one that I did first as a trial uh, the link is always at the top of the page and you'll notice here that you can zoom in closer if you wish okay and down at the bottom let me just show you where I'm going at down here okay there's a, a little red rectangle which allows you then once you've zoomed in to move around the image so I can drag that into a new position and you'll see a new part of the image the highlighted areas I've put on, if you click on them, it can put in any text that you want. So that's the evaporator core, what happens in that core, okay? Uh, and there's another one here, that's an accumulator, that's a refrigerant charge port. Uh, this one, if I click on it, cycling switch, what's this for and what does it do? Uh, as an interactive images that can be produced, then, um, you know, I, I think it's... Uh, Excellent. There are layers. At the moment I only have one layer, but you can put in layers and turn them on and off. And if you actually do know the dimensions of these particular um, images, then you will be able to measure them and get the actual measurements as well. It's well worth having a look at. The home site is here. Uh, and if you go there, you can have a look at some of the images that have been shared and decide on whether, again, it is useful for you. Last but not least, our eighth find, although it's numbered number seven, is basically a website that's been produced by Lawrence Gotez. And it's a, a very basic uh, practice for using the mouse button. For example... Uh, moving the mouse, let's just zoom in so you can see the, the titles of the various bits. Okay, the form elements I suppose are quite nice and some people might find that the, the game Windows Mouse Practice game that you can download is worth having a look. I should add that I haven't had a look at that game as yet so I can't recommend it or not recommend it. Uh, the drop down list just to give you an example of what it's like there's the drop down list if I choose three up drop three pictures if I choose one you only get one picture if I put four it gives you four etc okay fairly basic but very good for complete beginners using the mouse uh, that's all for today hopefully we will see you at our live broadcast 
which is on Valentine's Day, which is this Monday coming up, uh, and look forward to seeing you then.